And we're back with some more Spaced Out DLC for Oni. And today, today we're going to try and uh, get our duplicates up at gym so we can train them up. We're trying to make an elite squad. And for an elite squad, we need a, an elite training montage. But there's a few other things we need to do before we can concentrate on that fully. First is we're going to make ourselves some space. Get all the plug slugs out of the way. I don't want them... Uh, those plug slugs are just continuing to eat all of our raw metals that are lying around the place. And poop out hydrogen, which is an annoyance. We're, we're going to contain them. At the same time, we need to put in an oxygen production facility. That should be fairly quick. We've done that a few times before. And then once all that is done, we want to start using this polluted water for our crops and this well, brine for our oxygen. And at that point, we should be able to just run our gym pretty much indefinitely without having to worry about anything else. But first up, uh, moving the sludge press. With that done, the sludge press just frees up this space here. We're going to want that for our gym later on. Uh, next up, critter movement. Let's get all of those plug slugs contained so they can stop eating all of our precious cobalt. I am not even bothered hooking up a wire to these. I, I haven't been fi able to find a good use for plug slugs. Maybe on a portable power supply on missions? That might be an idea. Though I don't think you'd be able to cram enough batteries. As it is, I'm just not sure where exactly they fit into the meta of this game just yet. They're just... They seem like an early game power source, but considering how quickly you can get into solar right now, they just don't seem that useful. Also, they consume metal, which... Metal always has a use. There's just... There's no... Hmm. You know what? We'll leave it. We'll just stick them in here out of the way. Maybe we'll find a use for them later. I don't want to exterminate the population. Hey, with that done, I think next up is going to be... Oh, gate activation. Yes. Nothing we're interested in here. We'd prefer someone with uh, science or supply just so that uh, it helps out. So instead, we'll just grab the barbecue. Oh, when it comes to this over here, how do I explain it? Yeah, all the raw foods come in this side. They get dumped in here. So cooking ingredients and all of this stuff comes in here. So, say, the grub fruit comes in one side, and then once it's cooked up, it gets shunted into this one. Uh, which puts it as grub fruit preserve or roast grub fruit nuts, and they get stuck in this side. And this basically pulls them here to feed the cookers, and dumps into that conveyor loader to go out into that output. And this here is just... Yeah, that's where all the, the dupes drop off the raw ingredients. It's just a, a little way to have infinite storage on both sides. Also, that's loaded with chlorine. Anyway, uh, yes, what was the plan? Ah, yes, uh, oxygen storage. We want, or oxygen production, we want to put in a little oxygen production facility here. Uh, that also is conveniently close to our brine. Oh, and in the brine tank, I've thrown in a bunch of fish, preferably gulp fries. Uh, the reason being, they'll convert all that polluted water to clean water. Otherwise, it's just an annoyance for me to filter it. So we'll just leave it the way it is and see what happens. I mean, maybe we end up with some polluted water going through into our oxygen system. We'll we'll put in some safety precautions. All right. Auction production. Before I get started on this, I maybe got uh, sidetracked by a few cleaning up jobs. Um, we wanted to use a blueprint and we've got eight Paku showing up. So I put a little brick here and we're going to hope they all flop their way to the right. Yeah, they're, they're pretty intelligent about finding their way to the nearest source of water, so long as it's within a certain distance. I wonder what it is. Yeah, there we go. That will that will add nicely to our meat supplies. Actually, our food supplies are looking really, really well. Uh, no, uh, yes, auction production, that was it. To get this finished, we are going to need some 2 kilowatt wire, and I don't want to spend so much time smashing it up. I think we'll have a quick trip down to the Badlands biome down here, and we'll grab some of the iron ore. Not too much of it, however. The temperatures over this side are over 100 degrees, so no, but here, 50 to 60, that's actually quite livable. So we'll core out some of this iron ore just for wiring. And it just saves us the time of smashing it up. A little bit of an on-pause moment here while we dig. <laughs> dig a little bit of a mineshaft. We also have to stick in a little bit of uh, polluted oxygen production here with a... Uh, uh, damn it, sublimation station. That should get us all the way down here to a nice look at the magma biome, which we don't even want to think about touching. Oh, there is some more iron over there. No, no, get the gym finished. We're just going to extract the iron we need. Where is it? Iron is there, 400 kilos. We're going to get a, as much iron as we can out of this place. Oh, we'll take that too well while we're here. And once we've got all of that, we'll use that to finish off this section. I think we're just about ready to start this sucker up. Uh, we're going to oh, wall in this side, wall in that side. It's pretty much the same sort of straightforward design we used last time as well. It's small enough because we're not going to be running too many duplicates on this uh, planet, or asteroid. Uh, we're going to pump up the salt water from down here, and because the, well, brine water? Because it's so cold, we're going to pass it through here and actually pre-chill all of our oxygen. And then after it's done that, it goes up and gets desalinated, and we have a storage backup tank here. These things need to be emptied. So let's make sure there's no interruption in water supply. And then we'll have a 40 degree tank of water just sitting there, waiting to be accessed. One second, hook that up. Oh, I didn't hook up power to the pump, did I? Oh, god damn it. One second. Here we go. Icy cold water coming up. Um, 
Mm, I'm wondering if I should stick on a polluted water or a, like a water sieve just to make sure, but you know what? I, I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to come back to bite me, but it's just really cramped up here. All right, so that goes through there, goes on to the desalinator, desalinator starts desalinating, and then it goes in and we get it water. The water comes in at 40C, though. Then it gets sent over here and thrown into our electrolyzers. That point, we'll have this as if it's above 450. Come on. Yeah, that's that, and gas. All right, we're not going to turn on the top one for a while, namely because there's just not going to be a lot of hydrogen for a while, not unless the ga until the gas pumps catch up. At least I normally hook them to gas tanks, but I don't think there's any real need in this situation. We have such a large base to spread it out amongst, we can just dump it out into these, and then it should, well, yeah, this can soak it all up. All right, what are we looking at down here? Actually, that's about good enough. Now, was it 250? I think it was 250. We're going to go with 250. All right, so because that's sealed off, no more fresh oxygen can get across the top, so all we have to do is get rid of this bottom oxygen here, which is slowly but surely... Come on, come on. You're down to micrograms. Just be gone already. And there we go. All right. That's all of the oxygen out of there. So we hook that sucker up. And there is one giant blob of oxygen. That, that's fine. That's fine. Over here, how are we looking? We got mostly oxygen, actually. Okay. That kind of works. All right, let's uh, start sealing this up then. This should be, f this should continue to function as normal. We'll just seal that in, seal that in. There we go. This is the overflow. Once this hydrogen backs up, and eventually it will, it will take a while. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. Maybe leave that open until that's fixed. Once we fix the damage from the oxygen getting in there, we'll seal that up. Any of the overflow hydrogen, once this backs up with when it's full of hydrogen, We'll go over here and get sent out with this gas storage tank. That gas storage tank will just burn it off in a hydrogen generator that will dump directly onto our single one kilowatt grid. Um, yeah, it, it's not great, but it just it's a cheap and easy way to do this. For now, we shall filter out the oxygen and get rid of it. How are we doing? Yep, that's all the oxygen gone, so... Actually, we can just get rid of that filter straight away. That worked out really well. Boom, do that there. Right, we can deconstruct that one tile. That should let all the rest of the hydrogen out. Oh, one second. Deconstruct those two there. And that should be the system started. Now, at the moment, we've got this kicked in, and oh, who's suffocating? God damn it, guys. God damn it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Yay. <laughs> okay, now get out. God damn it. Okay, done and done. We shall seal that up, and I'm going to keep an eye on it this time to make sure that they don't seal themselves in. And with that complete, we are golden on the oxygen front. Calculations-wise, uh, the oxygen we can get out of this, there's enough out of it, I think, to support, support seven and a half dupes, which is not a lot. The reason being, this stuff, when you filter the salt water coming out of this, uh, you lose a third of the mass. It's just, well, it's kind of an annoyance of this type of uh, design, where is it? Uh, salt water, ah, brine. We put in five kilos of brine and we get out 3.5 kilos of water and 1.5 kilos of salt. So we get out lots of salt this way. And there's a lot of people mentioning that you can take that salt and grind it up. Where is it? In here. So you can grind up the salt in here and make table salt. And when you do, you get 100 kilos of sand out. So it's actually a renewable source of sand as well, which is actually kind of nice. Will it be enough to provide all of your deodorizers and water sieves? I'm not sure. I haven't done the math on it, but we'll find out later on, I suppose, when we start messing around with those things. But that is oxygen production done. Let's have a quick run through it for those people who haven't seen it, or just as a quick refresher. Cold water comes up through here, pipes through the bottom section. That bottom section is now freezing cold because of all the water going through there. Uh, the oxygen and hydrogen that gets spit out by the um, electrolyzers, well, the oxygen floats down, the hydrogen floats up. It's just the way the gases are designed in this game. The hydrogen gets trapped up here where it gets sucked out by the gas pump. Oxygen floats down the bottom where it gets sucked out by these gas pumps. It's just a, a powerless way of filtering the two gases instead of using one of those uh, expensive gas filters. The uh, hydrogen goes up here to get burnt off and burned in our hydrogen generators, which powers this whole mess. Uh, we can remove the these power generators later. And the oxygen gets sent off to, well, oxygenate our entire base all the way up. We might want to send one pipe down to the bottom as well, though we don't really have any plans to go down here anytime in the near future. And that's it. We're literally running on this forever now. We can, so long as we don't go above seven dupes. 
which later, later. Next up though, we want to run our crops sustainably as well. And that means using this. Now this cool slush geyser is going to be a problem because the water it spits out is minus 10. Our crops here can only survive down temperatures as low as 10. So they'll survive from 10 to 30 to C. So if we pump in this icy cold polluted water, that's just going to cause these to have horrible issues. They'll, they'll start dying basically. Oh, and we need three of these bog buckets to support each duplicant, which means uh, 18. We need 18 of these to support the amount of duplicants we currently have. We'll stick in a few extra, of course, just to be on the safe side. But I'm thinking, same thing again. We hook this up to, uh, say, a tepidizer to warm up some water to make sure that this is, um, doesn't ever go over temperature. And we keep enough of these to support about eight duplicants just to be on the safe side. Well, we've got the basics of it down. Polluted water comes from up here, goes down here, runs by this tepidizer. This tepidizer heats the water up to, say, ooh, if the temperature is below 17 degrees. I'm going to about 17. These things can live from 10 to 30. I think 17 degrees is a good compromise. It keeps our base nice and uh, warm as well. We're going to run some of this water around the base, maybe. Uh, the problem, though, is this thing requires 960 watts. This line here, this thing can only support one kilowatt. Now, mm, we could smash up an awful lot of metal, but I've got a better idea to upgrading our power grid. Uh, let's just uh, do a little bit of digging up here first. Once we've uh, cleared out some areas to get our hands on some copper ore, we're going to replace all of the wires in here with heavy copper ore wire, or heavy, uh, heavy watt wire. It's the cheap, nasty stuff that looks really bad and has terrible... Whoa. Well, never mind, the decor up here was never going to be that good anyway. We're going to run this wire the whole way through the, the uh, solar panels and down as far as our batteries. That will make this entire network capable of supporting 20 kilowatts, I believe. Though, honestly, it's really rare that I've used this stuff, though this new map type really gives you the, the opportunities to get, take advantage of these things. So we'll have, uh, say, two of these hooked up. And where are we going? Ah, God damn it, I keep pressing the wrong button. Too many games. All right, that should allow us to run two of these transformers off one of these. So what exactly have we done by doing all of this and messing around with the powers? Well, this means this wire here can support 20 kilowatts. And all of the power from this is getting dumped across here. Ignore this little wire that goes across for now. This down here and into these battery banks. Eh, because it's solar and we want to store up the power. Then what happens is it gets fed into this power transformer, which regulates it to one kilowatt. That means we can only draw one kilowatt on this one kilowatt wire, and we won't get any overloads. We might get brownouts if we try and draw too much power, but in all fairness, what have we got in this? 2.25 potential kilowatts consumed. Well, that's deodorizers and sublimation stations, which we've switched off. Uh, there's the electric, uh, electric research stations, electric gill, grill, a few things like that, but a lot of this stuff is very intermittent, so we don't have to worry too much. However, we were about to put on something that's going to draw 900 watts consistently, or a lot. So instead, we've plugged it into a second transformer. Now we can run a second wire all the way down here. Okay, there will be a, a lot of hopping. We're going to have to hop across a bunch of stuff. But so long as we run this all the way down, we can basically get another kilowatt of power down here without messing up our whole system. And that means we can run this whole thing quite efficiently. And while they're sticking together those wires, let's go have a look and see what blueprints we've got going on. Nothing really grabbing my eye there. We'll just take the ice. I, I, maybe I need to be less picky about the duplicates we're, we're choosing, but eh, no, we can wait. I want to wait until our gym is up and running at least. Done. Power connected all the way along. Now we just have to hook up the water. For that, we will deconstruct this pump. Actually, let's disable the pump. We'll disable that pump so it's not drawing any water. And then once we hook that up there, all that water should flow through. Now it's insulated pipes all the way through here. And then once it flows through this section, it's minus seven going in. And by the time it gets out, ooh, four or five degrees. That's not perfect. However, I should point out it's going to slow down an awful lot here. The reason it's going to slow down so much is because we're not drawing the full 10 kilos per second. So that will give it more time in these radiant pipes part. And perfect. So long as it's about above 10, we don't care. Otherwise it would stifle our crops. And done. Alright, just to recap that, um, this means our oxygen supply is now infinite. Supplied off this and should never ever cause us any problems. Well, fingers crossed. I'm still a little bit leery about that polluted water, but I don't want to let it go anywhere else. Um, at the same time, over here, all of our food crops are now supplied off this tank, which is a renewable source and will never run out. So we've got enough food here to... Is that, are they planted? Yeah, I believe they are planted. But uh, that means they should never run out either, and... So long as we don't go above seven dupes, we'll never run out of oxygen or food. So, let's put ourselves together a little bit of a gym, shall we? And considering that we don't need to worry about anything bar, say, emptying this, this is the only physical labor that we'll need doing. 
uh, emptying the desalinator and oh, we can cut these off. We'll cut off the wire there, but I'm going to replace it so if there's an emergency we can hook it back up if needs be. It's always good to have emergency coal power hooked up to your oxygen just in case. Oh, and this here... This here is set to store excess overflow hydrogen and oh my god, what the hell? How is the hydrogen not backed up yet? Uh, you know what? Let's maybe hook this up. What's going on? Oh, this is not full yet. Yep, uh, if you're using this, please note, don't disconnect the power until after you fill the liquid, res liquid reservoir. The reason being, this liquid reservoir, is, you're basically running the desalinator flat out, and its power requirements are quite high. Now, if you're just running it to keep up with the amount of water you're consuming in here, that's fine. You'll produce enough hydrogen to provide power to your uh, electric uh, oxygen production and just the desalinator running at about uh, a kilo per second. But if you're running the desalinator at five kilos per second, you're probably going to be stressing your power, uh, your self-contained power reserves. So we'll let this run for a while longer, and once the hydrogen backs up, then we'll disconnect that power. Uh, yes, gym. So let's put together a gym for our duplicates so they can get faster, stronger, better. Before we uh, start everyone on their training regime, we're going to move around a few things. I want to get set up uh, automated toilets and sinks to cut down on the amount of side things that are going to distract them from all of their training. And we're going to move all of our science up here, give them some lights and everything just to make sure it you know, works at maximum speed. And we can deconstruct all of this down here. And we're going to put in a, a water sieve for all of our toilets and sinks. When doing this, what I like to do is place down, well, remove the first two toilets. Then I can put them in and see where the, the actual inputs and outputs are going to be. You think I'd remember after all this time, but it, it's always nice to have a refresher just in case you're off by one. You might think they're the left or right, but anyway. Then I connect them all up like that so we know exactly where they're all going out. And I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll bring them down here and feed them directly into a water sieve. Uh, for example, there's going to be a door, say, right there. Well, we want to keep everything in line. It's always have, nice to have things a little bit neat. And then we go into our refinement section and grab the water sieve. Now, of course, the uh, the, the inputs outputs are on the wrong side for us, so we're just going to rotate that. I love that you can rotate these. I can't remember when they introduced it, but it was such a nice change. And then we'll bring that in there. So that means all of the output dirty water goes into that section, and the input clean water can go oh, right back up here and all the way along the bottom. Actually, all the way to there. And that should be it. Then all we have to do is prime the whole thing with a bit of clean water or even dirty water. We can throw some water in to be sieved, and that should be good to go. Oh, and maybe let's automate it a little bit as well. I mean, why not? Oh, damn it. I'm out of iron. How am I out of iron? I even went down later and scooped out some more of the stuff. You really need a lot of refined metal. We're missing the oil. We're missing the oil. You know what? We'll leave it as a manual chore. It's fine. It can be a manual chore for our dupes. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about all of the refinement and all that after we're finished with our gym. To just provide the seed starter for this, r remember, toilets produce more water than they consume. We're just going to have a uh, run the line from up here and feed some polluted water into the sieving system. That sends out to clean. And then once the line is filled enough, we'll just deconstruct this. You know what? That's more than plenty. Wow. Who's doing that? Their construction skill sucks. Uh, uh, once that's done, the w rest of the water should drain back into the plants slowly but surely. And now we can start replacing all of our toilets and sinks with actual proper ones. Piece of advice, replace them one at a time. Uh, I like to replace them just in pairs. That way you don't accidentally have a rush in the bathrooms and, you know, there's none there for anyone. While the dupes are cleaning up the last of the mess, that is now... Yep, yeah, that's now an infinite water system. Ooh. It's not quite full yet. Also, we need to put in an overflow. Um, Actually, this might be a decent idea. One second. This system here is not so bad. This comes down here, it hits this bridge and hops across. Now, the only reason we've got this bridge here is so that if the water can't go across this bridge, it'll shoot out sideways. These things are, it's just one of the pipe mechanics. So what we're going to do is connect that into the input. Once that's built, any polluted water that comes out of the toilets will come down here and get sent into the sieve as normal. There we go. Any excess water, as in when this fills up and there's too much water in the system, any excess should automatically get spit out this side and then get dumped down here and into our crops. And our crops will always be thirsty. That way any overflow water from our toilets gets immediately dumped into our food supply. Now we don't have to worry about the germs. Though, in all fairness, we've got enough germs already. We don't need any more. Okay, oh, and one last thing was a choose a blueprint. I just want to point out here, there's a, an amazing farmer here. Of course, they're flatulent and trypophobia, but uh, whatever. If you look at the uh, chances there with plus 14 agriculture, 
they get a plus 46% seed chance. Every time they harvest a plant, their chance, chances of producing a seed are plus 46%. Now, I haven't got into the numbers and started messing around with this, but one nice thing is Paku now can survive on seeds. They only need a third of a seed a cycle. Now, I presume there's a rounding thing here. They only usually give us the first digit, but I presume that's 0.33333, which is what they normally do. So that means one seed could feed them for a whole cycle. Imagine just running a whole bunch of plants that you could get a lot of seeds from. You could do an awful, awful lot with that. Uh, we'll have to go play around with that later. But for now, I think it's time to... Why are you not working? Oh. For now, I think it's time to get our gym started. So we've turned on a bunch of these. That means the duplicants should now come along and start jogging. This is going to be their gym. Now, the great thing about hamster wheels is they're the only activity you can do that increases two skills at the same time. They increase your athletics and they increase your machinery skill. And athletics is what we're really interested in here. Having super fast dupes is just so handy. Like, what are we at at the moment? Athletics of six. I mean, they, they're a duplicate that runs around a lot. That's not going to be great. And we've already got a couple of attribute increases. Machinery skill to plus six on Keymaker and plus two machinery skill on Flute Loops. So they've, all, they've both gained a point and they only just started. Now, they will stop for lunches and to get off and all that, but however, they won't go and take care of any chores. So if this fills up while they're on it, they won't look at it, but so long as we have a nice little back, uh, a backlog here, we should be fine. Uh, as well as that, they won't take care of the water sieve either, but once a day should be sufficient, either in the morning or when they're finished at the end of the night, they should take a look at it. So that should be okay. Now we just leave them there to do it. One other thing I've included is science. We want to actually do science on the site. Uh, the reason being... So let's take uh, Fruit Loops here. If we check out their science scale, it's at plus nine, but it's plus five base. That's how much they've actually got from doing science. Now we take a look at Keymaker here, for example, they've only got a, a base science of three. We want to get everyone up to five. So I have disabled Fruit Loops from doing science, and I have set everyone else to be allowed to do science, and they're going to prioritize it. And kind of, well, I'm going to, in the background, get everyone to do a little bit of science. I'm just going to, well, fiddle around with this in the background, queue up some uh, research every so often, and then maybe go and take care of some things on the side, like, I don't know, I kind of want to catch up on a few episodes of a couple of shows. So, yeah, what I, what I really want to do, actually, is just get them up enough science and then just leave them run overnight. And I mean literally running overnight. And then when we come back the next day, they're all basically maxed out on athletics and machinery and we didn't have to do anything. Now, I would like to point out there's a few things that are not perfectly, infinitely sustainable on this uh, current run. First is carbon dioxide. If we check at the bottom of the map, eventually the carbon dioxide will build up and cause a problem. We have nothing getting rid of it, but considering how slow it goes, we could leave this all night long and this should be fine. All night. Uh, yes, jumbo batteries. Jumbo batteries up here, they're going to overheat eventually. But considering it's minus 55 degrees up here, yeah, there's... It should take a long while. If we wanted to, we could run some, some sort of cooling loop through here. Well, actually, no, we couldn't. We'd have to use a gas cooling loop. We couldn't use a liquid cooling loop because all the liquids would freeze in the pipes. But this should be fine for several, several, several hours. So, uh, training montage time. Since I can't really put together a training montage, I can give you two recommendations. Let's see, I'll have a, a link in the top right to Eye of the Tiger by Rocky. You know, if you kind of want the old school training type montage, you know, Eye of the Tiger is always a good one. Uh, if you want something a little bit more modern, we've got uh, top right now, we'll have uh, X going to give it to you with uh, Rick and Morty. You know, that's just because it's 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 pretty much a new current classic. Anyway, let's, uh, let, let's see what this looks like in, say, several hours. More intense cardio. Super science. Realizing you left in a bunch of crops that you shouldn't have and you should really be digging all of these up because they're not actually a renewable resource. Coming back after a while after you've queued up all the researchers and gotten rid of them, there is literally no research left anymore. All of it's been done. Uh, we've filled our water tanks, we've cleaned up everything, and now it's time for... I think I'll take a nap and just let this run. So we're going to come back in probably... You know what? I'll start down to double speed. I don't want it going too fast. Uh, a couple of things I'll cover before we go. Uh, this is the scheduling for everyone or the priorities. I've put everyone into cooking. Might as well get them all, let, 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 let them all have a little bit of cooking, all have a little bit of farming. Uh, I've taken them all out of research except for Mother Load. They're only at uh, level, level four plus a few skill points. And for skills, I've tried to give everyone into field research. This gives them a, a plus four science with both of those, so it adds to their, their learning speed. And then we're just gonna let them run all night long. And uh, what's that attribute increase? Julie Hops just got her machines up to level 8. Uh, let's see what it looks like in the morning, I'm guessing... Well, I'm guessing everyone will be level 20 athletics and level 20 machinery. After the rest of it, who cares? 117 cycles later. Yeah, so it turns out I sleep for 117 cycles. I'm a little bit lazy in comparison to these dupes. 
Anyway, uh, if we just have a quick look at the skills here, we'll see. Uh, machinery is 20, athletics is, or uh, machinery is 17, athletics is 20. The reason their machinery is 17 is this is a Luddite, so they have a natural minus 3 to their machinery. Uh, 20 machinery, 20 athletics, 17 machinery, 20 athletics, that's the second Luddite. Uh, 26 machinery and 20 athletics. Well, the extra 6 is coming from uh, all of their skills in mechatronics, but basically 2020. Uh, 2020, 2020, and 2020. Yes, everyone has maxed out their machinery and their athletics. Also, everyone's got a little bit in agriculture and a little bit in cooking as well along the way. Um, just because, well, I, I left them to do all the farming and all that if they wanted to. So we've now got some super duper speedy fast dupes that are really good at machines. That's exactly what we wanted. Uh, the base held up really well. I, I queued up a sweep command before I, I saved for the night and they swept everything too. Uh, in here you'll notice, yep, all the polluted water is pretty much gone. Occasionally some of it will melt in the ice biome and drop down here, but the fish take care of it. And then it turns into ice, which we occasionally sweep up. Um, over here, yeah, this has been working out. The crops have been working out. Everything's actually worked pretty stably. The only thing, let's see, up here, the temperature of this has gone up by 10 degrees, maybe a little bit more. I think it was 55, so we've gained about 12 degrees. Uh, we'd need to go to 75C before this would become a problem, so... We got a lot of leeway here. We got over 100 degrees of leeway and we only used 12 of it uh, running it overnight. Yes, this was very useful. Now, I know some people are going to be saying, but you're playing the game without playing the game. Uh, yes, and that is a valid criticism, but uh, I would like to point out, I've played this game a lot and I like to do it quickly. I would like the speed mod to speed things along. This just means I can run it overnight and then today, all of the dupes are going to be really, really fast. Uh, let's put in a telescope up here. Uh, we want to get start exploring the... We want to start exploring the star map as well. So let me try something here. There have been some claims that these things will work through walls, but I think it's sort of a, it's like in the previous version, so long as you had free space to the left of them and they could see the sky. Though, yeah, the solar panels kind of get in the way there. We're going to try building one up here and theoretically it should be able to see through the wall on this side if, uh, if the rumors are true. Ah, yes, see? Uh, how do I explain this? These things usually have a five tile sight radius, so this thing can see five tiles to the right, meaning it's actually seeing through the wall. I know that makes no sense, but it's just the mechanics of the game, and maybe it's five tiles to the left, so it can't see through here because there's stuff in the way. I don't know if, where it's based from though, it might be based from center, so it might be actually seeing a couple of tiles to the right. Because we're, it's seeing everything so slowly though, it'll, it won't detect things very quickly because we don't have full sight of the sky, but who cares? Uh, let's just plug this in. All right, that leaves Motherload up there to scan the stars, and that should hopefully get him to that last point of skill. I've tried to get everyone up to five research, well, hopefully our core duplicates, but I managed to get three, I think, up to level five, maybe four. Uh, Motherload didn't quite make it, they're just one shy, they only have a base skill of four. I just want that because it gives them extra skill leveling, and it means they'll level up faster when we put them into the, the field. Uh, you know what, I think I'm going to go grab, what was that? Attribute increase, science up to level five. Yes. Okay, just as I was talking about it, uh, I couldn't have planned that better. Uh, I am going to switch someone else out then. Might as well spread the science around. Uh, the reason I want to spread around the science is it just means everyone levels up a bit faster and it's easier to get those first few levels than it is to get the later ones. Going above level 5, for example, will take more experience than going from 4 to 5. So spreading it around, we can usually get everyone a little bit of science and means they'll all level up a little bit faster. I sort of want uh, our core group. So our core group here would be Fruit Loops, who's going to be our more than likely our rocketry pilot, then we're going to have Keymaker here who's going to be our engineer and Motherload who's going to be our digger. Oh, and we hired Trivaldo on the side, namely because they showed up and they had improved carry and adva and research as, well, s supply and research as two of their interests. So we thought, why not, that we, we can find a use for them later. With a little bit of reskilling, we've got Weaver up there. They're going to uh, hopefully skill up their science, but I think they're only level one. Yeah, they're, they're pretty weak sauce on the science front. And now we're going to skill scrub some dupes because it's time to go through to the other planet. And we might as well make sure they go through with the least requirement for morale as possible. While we're getting our scrub on, we might as well core out more of the map. I've been kind of lax about doing that, but we had a goal. Our goal was to gym everyone up, and now everyone is super duper fast. This is just going to make life so much easier. Alright, all the planning, everything I did so far, was all for this moment for when we're passing through the teleporter. Uh, we're going to get... The duplicate of choice to go through is going to be Motherlord. They're a digger. So we're sending them through to the other planet, and this would be the same whether we were rocketing there or using the transporter. First thing, interests are basically free. Uh, at this point, say, Motherlord here has an interest in research, which means if we grab that, it increases their morale requirements by one, but also gives them plus one morale because they have an interest in that, which means it's it's free. It, it's it cost efficient, let's say. 
then we get hard digging as well because that is also free. They have interest in it. So yeah, perfect. We'll grab that and we can grab improved carrying. All three of these cost us literally nothing. And the great thing about research is it gives plus two science, which is a plus 20% uh, bonus to skill gain. So as they're out digging and constructing on this new planet, they're going to learn how to dig and build faster and faster. Also, they're maxed out at 20, uh, 20 movement speed. So yes, uh, set destination and... Oh, you can change the destination? Well, okay, that's the set destination one. Fine, let's uh, oversee planetoid. Yes, yes, that's very nice. I think when you do this, it reveals the entire top of the map. But then when you go back to your own planet, I think it does the same thing. Because I hadn't actually explored all the way... Oh, no, it didn't. Last time I did that, it explored all the way out here to the right, even though I hadn't been there yet. Never mind. Let's uh, let's send over our duplicate of choice. Where are you, Motherlord? Oh, we should get him a hat first. And Motherlord steps in. We teleport them over. Oh, I haven't inspected it yet. Oh, never mind. Teleport it is. Bye-bye, buddy. See you on the other side. Done. All right, now let's see how quickly we can get this base up and running with a super dupe. Uh, first off, there's Abyssalite really close by. We may immediately have to upskill them to Abyssalite digging. It's one morale point in cost. Uh, we're just going to go over here and get some water so we can install toilets. In fact, yeah, we're going straight into Abyssalite mining. We're going to need that instantly. Uh, that allows us to dig through here. Uh, we're also going to want to put in, uh, yeah, water sieve or water pump. That should be enough to get us a toilet and a sink up and running. Then we just need a bed. Uh, I don't think there's any light coming off of that, is there? I don't want to put our duplicate near any light sources. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll just show them down some furniture. Uh, cut right. Actually, we don't even need to put it in a decent place. Ooh, food as well. We are going to want to put in some furniture in here for... Damn it, can we even put in a mess table? We don't have the metal ore for a mess table. Um, there's some right over there. All right, we'll grab some aluminum ore over that side. Submit bioscan. Yeah. Grant, once we get the aluminum ore and what's... Oh, attribute gain. Excavation skill has gone up to plus four. Well, what do you know? It's already working out. Uh, mess table. Put that there. Boom. And I think that's the basics. Oh, we're missing dirt. We have no dirt on this place. God damn it. Uh, I thought we'd all... we were going to get this done in record time. All right, we'll take out the dirt. Actually, no, I don't want to reset the timer on that. We'll take out the dirt here. That should give us enough dirt for the toilets, and then we can start digging down layers. I think we'll sort of put a ladder down through here and start excavating out the bottom layers. Boom. Toilets, sink, bedroom, dining room, and... Yep. That is... That was way too quick. Slight change in the plan. We're going to put the cot there, and we're going to excavate down here. That'll put us close to this. Also, there's a water pump down here. There's all sorts of nice stuff. Let's start the demolition. Maybe I should have sent them over earlier in their shift or something. I don't even know when we sent them over. I should have planned that better. But we did manage to get them a mess hall, a barracks. Uh, we didn't manage to get them a bathroom, unfortunately. But I don't think that really matters. And once the uh, this recharges on the other side, that's at 13%. Once that recharges, we're going to send over someone else. We're going to send over all three of our, our starting dupes. Maybe even four. I'm not quite sure yet. We should be quickly and easily able to build this place up. All we really want it for, though, is the ethanol for now. We... There's nothing really much we want from this, bar the ethanol, because that gives us easy access to lots of carbon dioxide that can get us into our rocketry program. Oh, and we're going to want to set up a telescope as well to expand out and view the stars. Currently, we're expanding out this, but uh, yeah, we're a little bit slow. Our current scientist on that is not very sciencey. Anyway, I think... Yes, yes, I'm definitely over time. I think we're, we're up to about the 35-minute mark on footage. Anyway, I, uh, I I know this was a little bit of an odd one where we, we had to skill up all our dupes, but I think this is going to work out really well when, as we start going through the other planets. What I really wanted was a force like this. Like, Motherload here is just... Okay, their, their excavation is not amazing. It's only at 8, and I'm sure I could bring one in with 14 skill. But their construction's good, their athletics are maxed out, their machinery is great. At some point, we're going to have to start smashing up rocks to make some refined materials and stuff like that. And they will do so incredibly well. And the other two dupes that are going to follow this one, they will also be amazing. And we will just keep moving them as a, a demolition team from planet to planet, building up the infrastructure and then moving on to the next one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works out. Anyway, I'm going to uh, cut it out here. I hope you enjoyed and good luck.